can't believe that the school year is almost over. I'm really happy I got to experience my final year in person. Yeah, it's been a little bit of everything. What was your favorite memory of APN? I honestly just love the process of creating the shows and the stream with the people. I agree. APN is like a second family to me. Everyone is good at something, and we all work like in a wild oil machine. I agree. But now that the school year is over, what are you looking forward to in the summer? I'm really excited to be working with my sister in San Diego, saving up for a car. That sounds like a whole lot of fun. I'm just trying to get all my college stuff together before I leave to Johns Hopkins. Ah, I see. Well, I'm pretty sure you don't have to worry about that because there's probably Target stores in Baltimore. But anyway, let's get on to the show. I'm Kailani. And I'm Justin. Welcome to APN Show 29. Our amazing intermediate theater class is holding their annual show this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. They'll be performing The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Tickets are $10 for students and seniors, $15 for general admission, $30 for VIP seating. And you can purchase at the link down below. Last week, a leak within the Supreme Court, as reported by the Politico, exposed that the con conservative majority court may be overturning uh, Roe v. Wade. To see what this means, let's head over to Miriam. On May 3rd, it was leaked in an initial draft that the Supreme Court is voting to overturn Roe v. Wade. Let's see the potential cause and effects of this decision. In 1973, a landmark decision was made by the Supreme Court that said that the Constitution supports the woman's liberty to have an abortion without the government's restriction. That was the case of Roe v. Wade. So what will overturning it do? If Roe v. Wade were to be overturned, it would have devastating effects for women's health and autonomy. If you want to support women, you have to be pro-choice. You know, so it's kind of like the assumption, and if you don't, you're like this, like, you know, evil person. Overturning Roe v. Wade gives states the opportunity to consider fetuses as legal adults. So if a person who's pregnant has a miscarriage, they could be considered a felon and that could potentially take away their right to vote in that state. Abortion is just a deliberate and deliberate killing of a human being in utero. And, you know, killing an innocent human being in utero is just morally wrong. The right to choose is not about a fetus or even a cluster of cells. It's about freedom for women. Human life begins at conception, right? So we are human and we are alive at the moment of conception and there is no question about it. And so abortion is a procedure that invariably and deliberately kills a human being in utero. Women should get to decide when and how they want to become mothers. Uh, not the government, not conservatives, not Mitch McConnell, and to be honest, not really any man. The issue here is how can we fix society so that we um, are able to better support women, children, and families without needing to literally dismember limb by limb or inject a lethal substance into the child, into the preborn child's body. Uh, when it comes to making decisions about a woman's body, men really should defer to the woman. Adding trauma to trauma does not erase the trauma. Adding violence to violence does not erase the violence. We will have to see if the Supreme Court decides to actually overturn it. The decision will be expected to come this summer. Let us stay tuned for what the Supreme Court's final decision is. Congratulations to our four-person academic decathlon team for collecting a total of 23 medals at the 2022 LA County competition. Stephanie Wang was the top scoring decathlete in Division Three, and Sophia Lee finished third overall in score. Max Ma earned a perfect score and delivered his speech at the awards banquet. Congratulations again. Can't wait to see what comes next for the team. As the temperature rises in the state of California, the Arcadia High School critter population begins to rise as well. Reporting on this case, here's Jelani to show you the various wildlife and their effects on the school. Animals of all kinds, ones that fly, crawl, or buzz, roam all around Arcadia, two of which are the Says Phoebes and the Western Fences. Don't recognize the names? Don't worry. A slender yellow-bellied flycatcher describes the Says Phoebes, typically with their species, they are quite undaunted by people and often nest in buildings, like ours here, nesting beneath a stairwell. Gathering whatever they could find nearby, dried grass, wrappers, feathers, and rocks, these materials help make their nests a cozy home. On the other side of campus, their friendly neighbor, the western fences, are lizards with hidden vibrant scales. In their leisure time, they tend to bask under the sun and do push-ups to assert their dominance. Besides those two, here are some anecdotes from fellow Apaches about the animals they see on campus. I was in the quad and uh, I saw these, these uh, I believe they were falcons flying above me, two of them. 
uh, you can see like the markings and stuff, they were so close. And they all were like, ah! And, you know, it was a really cool experience seeing, you know, such a bird of prey, especially two that close. So, you know, they're probably like, you know, a couple, a couple goals. I see like two people crowding the, the glass door and it's like, oh my god, look, there's a cat, there's a cat. And so like, I, I, I get, um, the door was closed, but like I was moving as slowly as possible, trying not to scare it. And it was like, a uh, small black cat, I hear, I hear it's a regular around the pack. I haven't seen him, like, seen him again recently, so I don't know. As you can see, Arcadia is a sanctuary to many animals. It's important that we respect their space here. So if you see any of the little babes, leave them be. And this has been Jelani, and back to studio. Graduation season is finally here for the class of 2022. Grad and I will be at Disneyland California Adventure on Saturday, May 21st, and the Black Galeretta takes place at the pack the next day. Senior Awards is on Thursday, May 26th, and the next day will be Senior Activity Day and Grad Run. To wrap it up, graduation is on June 3rd, and you will pick up your diploma at the cafeteria on June 6th before you go off to summer. Make sure that you have cleared all your library holds by May 27th in order to attend these events. More information will be announced during the Senior Assembly next Wednesday. A round of applause is in order to Ms. Novak and the speech and debate team for making it to the semifinal round at the state championship tournament. The team did their best in school history and finished ninth in the state. Amazing job and keep up the good work. Last week we premiered the first ever part of APN's new documentary. This week we'll get an in-depth look into the world of Arcadia's unhoused population. Our documentary team is proud to present part two of Homeless in the Community of Homes. I don't know where the end is anymore. I did, I, I saw an end at one time, I thought. I thought it was going to be okay, that it was going to be different. Uh, finally, I've, I've been on the streets now for over three years with, with my wife. Over three days, three years. And, and I'm tired of it. I'm so, so tired. And, I mean, I'm more down mentally, I'm more down physically. I mean, I'm getting old, you know, and, and it's hard. It's hard just rolling over on these rocks and stuff and trying to get up in the morning, you know. That, that in itself is an accomplishment. Just trying to get up. Can't even say getting up out of bed because we don't have a bed, but you know, we lay on the ground with a blanket. Oh, it's hard, especially the cold. I guess one of the hardest part is the cold. So like, let's say November, December, I think February is the coldest month. So even though I'm in my car, I put uh, I put about ten layers of clothes, <laughs> seven layers here, three scarves, uh, you know, beanie, keep warm. Sometimes put a heater on. Uh, that's one of the hardest parts in the cold. It's like you have a different spirit, like when you're out here. You know what I mean? And it's like it's just kind of magical, you know, in its own way. Um, after a while, you know, the feeling of just you know, being outside, you know, just being wild and free, you know, it's just, it gets really exciting sometimes, you know, and, and joyful, you know, just being free, you know. If, if you're spending most of your time concerned about safety, concerned about the weather, concerned about, you know, uh, whether um, the police are going to tell you you need to leave from, you know, and lose your possessions, those are all just constant stress, stressors. And we know constant stress you know, is not is not good for one's mental health. I, I wander around. I actually have to beg for change. It's not fair. Um, I beg for change so I can eat every day, but they bring food here. I'm gonna make sure we're gonna clean it up. Don't worry, we okay. clean it up every day. Okay. Fellow Arcadians, Apaches, uh, if you see us on the streets, say hello, man. <laughs> we don't bite. I'm not gonna cuss you out because you say hello. Little do you know, I'm going to say hello back <laughs> with a smile. There was probably a, set, a camp set up here. And we let them know, hey, this property's here. You know, you have 70 hours to move it. And at this kind of all this in February, but we give them three days. And more, most of the time, they get all their stuff and they move it. Um, what we do is we offer, uh, we go out and offer services and resources to, to the homeless. Um, now, if uh, a person who's experiencing homelessness is engaged in a criminal activity, then we'll enforce that. But we don't engage in an actual sweep. The police came, uh, said we had to move. We have 72 hours. 
whatever we leave behind, they're going to take. Uh, no resources or, or nothing, pretty much uh, still the same thing. They keep telling us we can't stay somewhere. we got to sleep. It's, it's natural to sleep. You have, you have to sleep. Everybody has to sleep. It's close to the end of the show, so you know what that means. Yep, down to our favorite part, sports. It's honestly pretty impressive how uh, um, many of our teams made it this far in the CIF playoffs. I right, I know right, even though some of their seasons have come to an end, we're so proud of everything they've accomplished. Let's head over to Rahul live in the studio to recap the last few moments of our spring sports. Rahul, what do you call a player that constantly misses slam dunks? Ali whoops. Anyways, our boys tennis team had an extremely successful season, finishing first in the Pacific League after an exhilarating three-match struggle against Burbank. They followed this up with an impressive 11-7 win against San Marcos on Monday, putting Arcadia in the CIF D1 Top 4 and securing us a spot in the CIF semifinals. And in an intense matchup this Wednesday against the Loyola Cubs, we were unfortunately unable to secure the win despite our Apache's best efforts. Our Apache badminton team swept the stage at the 2022 Almond Finals, taking the top two spots in all five events, making our very own Arcadia badminton team CIF Southern Section finalists. Their next game will be this Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Be sure to cheer them on in person or tune into our live stream at apachenews.aost.net. On the topic of CIF Southern Section Championships, our Apache swim team performed their best achieving excellent results and many swimmers achieved fantastic performances at finals. Congratulations to those who participated and good luck to all those participating in CIF State Championships later today. A huge round of applause to our amazing softball team and everything they were able to accomplish this year. Their season unfortunately came to an end after losing to Don Lugo 2-1 in the second round of CIF playoffs. It was a pitcher's duel through eight innings, but our Apaches just weren't able to get the right hits at the right time. However, we cannot forget about their amazing run, which included moments like a nine-game win streak to the Pacific League Championship once again. Congratulations, and we can't wait to see you guys compete again next year. With the school year coming closer and closer to an end, sports tournaments as a whole are wrapping up. This has been Rahul covering sports. Back to the anchors. Talking about wrapping up, this is our last time anchoring the show. Well, yeah, but it also means that it's time for the summer. I know, but still, I'm sad about this year ending, and you're graduating soon too. Yep, I can finally graduate and start a new chapter in my life. So you're saying you won't miss us at all? I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, it was a great year, and I'm glad that I spent it with all of our amazing teams. Aww. Aww. See, I knew it. But anyways, make sure to follow us on all our socials down below. Also, be sure, be sure to check in our, make sure to tune into our Pop Assembly live stream next Friday. This has been Justin and Kehlani. See you next time, Apaches.